Hello and welcome to Golden Droplets episode number 38. My name is Ricardo Valls. I am the president and founder of Valsio Consultant. And today we're going to start a mini series on how I use Surfer to represent your chemical data. This will be a combination of Excel to process the data and Surfer to represent the graphics. So, once again, Golden Droplets, episode number 38. Enjoy! For this exercise, we're going to use the following database that can be downloaded from Mendeley using this link here. It's a group of data from an area from Nigeria, and it contains coordinates, some geology, the erosional level, the typical samples, and the quartiles for rare earth elements and gold mineralization. Also, the number of the sample, the real number on column J, and a simplified number on column E. If you want to learn about how to get the typical sample, the erosional levels, and the quartiles, there are other videos on my YouTube channel, which I will put a link here for you to explore. Another point is that in order to save time, it's very useful to organize your table, having the first two columns as the easting and northing or latitude and longitude. So we will open Surfer. And the first thing that we're going to do, we need a base map. Okay, maybe you have an image, but if you don't have it, there is a simple way of doing this thing. So we start by creating a post of our data and here is our data and then we need to tell the system what coordinate system it is it has so for that we click on map coordinate system and we click on change and we know that our coordinate system is 32 i have it already on my list of favorite so you just normally you will go here and you will find the one that you need, but I already have it down here. So, and the system is telling me that the, the map has a layer, which is a post surfer that doesn't have the coordinate. We say, ah, okay, we accept that. But then we go down here and click on assign now. And now all our data has the same coordinate system. Now, what we want to do is to export this square into Google Earth and then copy the image from Google Earth to use as a base map. For that, we need to limit the map to the borders, even without the, the coordinates like here. We can leave it, but I mean, it's not that important. We have this rectangle. And then you click File, Export as a KMC, like we call it base map. And all we check that here in these two columns, you have the real coordinates, not the amount of pixels. So click Accept. And then you open Google Earth, go to File, Open, double click on the base map. and you get here to the area. Adjust the tilt, make it a little smaller, and then with any uh, clip tool that you may have, okay, you just click new, and we select that square there, and we will save it 
as our base map. And now we have an image of the area. We also know the coordinates, the maximum and minimum coordinates for this section, which come from the Excel table. Um, now what we need to do, we will open a new map and we will import this image that we just took as a base map. Click here, base, you select the image. Now, this image doesn't have coordinates, as you can see, it has only the amount of pixels as coordinates. So you click on the image and then on general, you click on your reference image. Now, Surfer will give you a good reference with just three points. I usually use four and I use the four coordinates from the border. So you click on this icon here, it selects point one, two, three, and four. So the only thing that you need to do is to come here and put the information. So for point one, the minimum value for X for UTM, X East will be three, five, eight, two, nine, six, and also the minimum value for the UTM North, which will be six, eight, zero, one, six, seven. Then point two will have the same elevation, six, eight, zero, one, six, seven. And X will be the maximum value of X, which is 42, 80, 79. Point number three will have the same uh, UTM East. So we'll repeat this number here. Four, two, eight, zero. Seven nine, but it will have the maximum value for the UTM North, which is seventy three nine one one three, and the last point will have the same coordinates as the beginning. So three five eight two nine six, and the same. UTM North, 739113. Now, notice in this column, the error that we had. Now, when I press enter, this column will vary, probably gonna be near to zero because these are very good coordinates. So exactly. So we have our image georeferenced. When we have that, we just click on the first icon update the map, we say yes, we say accept, we can close this thing, and now we have a base map that has the coordinates of our system. To this, we can add now the post, the values, our post, and we can do this two ways. We can just click and drag, this thing here, but I'm going to do it in the best way, which is sooner. I just click the map and here on layers, add layers, I will add the post and it will be already in the map. So this is how we do the base map and we have our factual map. Of course, there are other things like cosmetic that we need to do, like uh, select a scale that will be proper for our uh, map. We select a 4,000 scale. We can put the names like UTM East, UTM North, Also, it will be useful to have a scale on this map. So for the scale, we just click on map tools, add scale. 
it's very simple. I prefer the, the double bar alternate. And I also select the subdivision and I make it thinner. I also select the blue color for the scale. I like it better. So that is our scale. And what else? We will need to have a north arrow here. Now, if you put the north arrow, just like insert a symbol, like we put it here, and then we go to point, and we select here north arrows, and then we select here this one, and we'll make it, I don't know, two centimeters, three centimeters thick. Okay. And I add select and adjust it. Okay. That's it. I can change the color to white so it will be easier to, to see. Now, what happened is that if I, I need to change the position of the map, you see, I lost the position of the, of the north arrow. So the way of doing this is very simple. Let's delete this. We click again on the map and we click on add layer and we click to add an empty base. Now, we you click on that empty base, you see the red arrows, meaning that this layer is selected. And then we repeat the same thing. We put the, the, the sign. Okay, and the sign is here inside. So we go to North Arrow, we select this one, we make it three centimeters, and we make it all white. And then we click somewhere else. Oh, we need to adjust the, the position. So it will be okay. So we click anywhere else. Now, if I move the map, the north arrow moves with it. With respect to the points, the base, the plot of the, of the sample location, you can select them. You can change the symbol. Instead of a cross, you can have a period. You can add the number of the, of the sample. You can reduce the, the size of the symbol. For example, let's make it smaller. Okay. Like that. You can add a label. Okay. So I will use not the number of the sample, which is too big, but my number. And that will give you the location of the sample, the numbers. You can make that number smaller, of course. Um, let's say put it like ten, and that's it. You have your base map ready. It has a location of the point. It has a scale, and it has an or arrow, and it has his it access identified. Next, we are going to start doing the model of the relief, and we will. I will show you a way that I use to define faults if I don't have a lineament analysis done for me. So let's check this out. I think these videos are brilliant and I'm sure you will like them too. Please like, comment and subscribe and don't forget to click the notification bell.